very situation to be in for both of these yeah. teams. It's fun to see here the first ban from Giants is going to be the Graves, because Giants as a team actually has the most different bans. They always look for target bans. Yeah, uh, last week, sorry, not yesterday. Could have been yesterday, but last week <laughs> against Fnatic. We saw Annie and Leona being banned against Fnatic from Giants to try and target out Yellowstar. Now they go straight for Pinoy here with, of course, the Graves. Yeah, of course, that's uh, Graves has been Pinoy's go-to. You know, he used a fantastically IM Cologne last year against CLG, as uh, Scumbag Crepo was alluding to. And last week as well, great performances. That interesting stat that Pinoy is tied for most kills with Reckless at 35, despite the team that's at the bottom of the table and is not looking particularly good. Gambit finds ways to get kills on the board. They do, and they find a lot of ways to die as well to the other team, <laughs> which is the main problem for Gambit, is they seem to get caught out in bad spots where they should never been able to die, and yet they manage to find a way. So definitely a thing I know that Coach Leviathan is working a lot on, and we have already seen some improvement from Gambit, if you look back the last few weeks. And now playing Giants, this all-important game down the bottom of the standings. You want to make sure you beat the teams just around you, so you avoid that number 10 spot and being, of course, automatically relegated down to the Challenger Series. So, right down to the last band. Graves, Nidley, Rek'Sai taken off the table. Four Giants. Rumble still up, Lissandra still up, Jarvin still up. Na, Ari, and Jax taken off the table for Gambit. Interesting, Nick was talking about Ari. We know Pepinira plays it. This game, most likely going to be Cassidy, but it is a flex pick. It is a flex pick, but it's uh, it's actually a first pick I like more and more. I used to think there was a lot of counters to Cassidy, but after watching three or four weeks into every single region now, we've actually seen Cassidy do really well in close to every matchup, unless he's against the likes of, let's say, a Nar in that top lane, but he's been banned away in this game here. So I like the flex pick from Giants. Doesn't really tell too much. Cassidy fits into nearly every single comp, except for maybe a Siege comp. Yeah, we need to see how these teams decide to lock in their champions. It's the first game here in week number four. Both teams really taking their times. So we've cut to multiple shots of the respective team coaches, Lothark and Leviathan respectively, chatting away to their team members. Not surprised to see that Jarvan locked in for Gambit Gaming. It has been one of Diamond's go-tos. Interestingly, yeah. he's run the Skirmisher Sabre all three times running Jarvan. The only victory Gambit have under their belt is when Diamond actually went with a chilling smite. Yes. One in five, one in six, actually. We're going to have to see if he wants to do the same today. Again, he likes to do it on Java, and he's again. The problem about Skirmisher Saber early on is it requires you to find these one on one fights with the enemy jungler. Otherwise, it won't really be useful before the late game where you can use it on the AD carry. So he often sets himself behind a little bit in terms of ganking or farming to, by getting, obviously, the Skirmisher instead of Trailblazer or, or the Stalker's Blade. But I actually like the fact he takes away Jarvan, because I feel like that's going to be the best jungler for Frederick. Not necessarily his best pick, but just because that jungler actually offers so much for Giants in terms of early ganking and also strong snowball potential, which is what Giants plays around. They have to win the early game and snowball out of control before you get to late game where they are lacking behind. Well, another champion that has early ganking yeah. power and the ability to start to snowball Good is Lee Sin. Locked in there for Frederick. I'm glad you mentioned it. What we've seen Giants doing traditionally in the last few weeks is focusing for Whirlip, but it's not worked out. It has yeah. not been successful with the exception of those Jax games. And it's actually Pepinero that's been fed almost all of the gold. Pepinero's got some early kills, and I'd like to see Frederick putting more pressure on that mid lane. Pepinero is the only player on Giants who's actually keeping up in CS compared to whoever he's laning against. The rest on average actually falls behind. So it's going to be all about Pepinero in this mid lane. And I want to see, as you just said here, Frederick, put some more focus on him. Get him going in the laning phase so he can start roaming to top lane, to bottom lane, and then he can be the big carry for you. Ignore Whirly. He's not getting that Jax anymore. It's banned in every single game after week one. So just focus on Pepinero. He's going to be your star player. And it does two things. It also puts pressure on Nick, a player who has also been underperforming this split. Yes, he had some good games last week, on Cassidy, but that's now off the table. So Zed and Callista locked in. To Fisher, we were talking about Callista leading up to today's games, and Pinoy's gonna pull her out. Yeah, we've only seen Freeze actually play her here in Europe, but of course being a very, very strong pick in other regions, and so now being picked up by Gambit and Pinoy. All in all, when you run Callista Zed, your last pick here needs to have some AP damage. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very easy for Giants to itemize against you going into the late game. So I want to see if we're going to get like a Cassiopeia maybe in the top lane for Copper Shot. Has been a pick for him in the past. 
But that would be a very squishy comp from Gamers. So we're going to have to see what they do with the last one. A lot of uh, importance on getting those team fights going. Both Giants and Gambit ran their games relatively long last week. Gambit had a 51 and a 59 minute game respectively. And something that both of these teams have demonstrated is a fairly weak mid to late game. We'll get to that in a moment as Giants have rounded out their composition. Caitlyn plus Nami is your duo. Azia and Kasten both can go middle or top. So some flexibility for Giants. How on earth? Did Azir go all the way down to the last few picks? That's such a good pick for Giants here. Again, it's the flex as you mentioned. Also, you have some very good pushing potential actually through the Caitlyn and the Azir. We have this Caitlyn Nami lane, which used to be the old fast pushing lane from Giants as well. So as long as this Cassadin can actually just sit and farm in the laning phase, then you can rely on the Caitlyn and Azir to group up early, just 4v4 four four one split, and take down these towers here because Gambit on their side. Unless we get a very early Hurricane from a Kalista, they're not bringing a lot of wave clear. They're going to have again also to get some AP damage. I don't think it's going to be Katarina. I would assume a Cassiopeia for Kapushat in this top lane. Yeah, I do think Giants have a lot that of scaling too. in their favor. Morgana locked in, so this is going to be in the mid lane most likely. Top or lane. top lane, in fact. Yeah. As Kabushar is going to pull out. There's your AP that you were looking for. There's the AP we were looking for, and we've actually seen Trey's from Jin Air over in Korea play top lane Morgana a lot. I believe he's undefeated on it as well. And the trick is if you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you can just push the lane from level one with your pool and you just keep pushing it down to the enemy turret. You get a few hits on it, you get it lower and lower and lower. And it's so hard to, to gank you because you have the black shield to prevent you from getting CC'd. And then you just keep pushing the lane. In the end, the tower will be so low. You do a quick rotation up, take it, get that global gold and obviously get into these mid-game team fights where you have now Kalista, who should have a Hurricane by that time. You have the Morgana, where she's extremely strong, and you take the fights right there, packing a lot of CC suddenly. So let's see if Gambit can pull that one off. Uh, Well-executed team fights is not something that they've been known for in the opening, opening weeks of the Spring Split last week against H2K. Uh, truthfully, it was a game of throws. Both team making yeah. massive mistakes. Gambit pushed all the way to the Nexus inside the base before getting aced basically and then lost the game. So Gambit cannot afford those same levels of mistakes no. with this composition. Especially because Giants want to go late game here. Cassidy and Azir, Caitlyn, all fantastic scaling. But their mid game is fairly weak. So I actually worry a little bit for Giants here because normally they're only good in the early game and have terrible late game shot calling. But they have the comp now to win in the late game if they get there. Well, there's the two team comps on your screen. Let us know if you agree or disagree with the Fisher. Who do you think is going to come out ahead at LOL Esports? Hashtag GIA win or hashtag GMB win. It is obviously going to be Gambit sitting with the advantage in the early game, it's Giants with the late game. No matter who wins, it's going to be a GG, GG. Giants Gaming taking on Gambit Gaming in the first game of the day in week four. I do want to reiterate that Gambit have had games all split long where they've had leads and they've also been a little uncoordinated when it comes to pushing those advantages in the mid game. It looked the same last year in Cologne, which has an event they won. But it's a long time since then, and we need to yeah. see what sort of practice Gambit have put in this last week. It's been very solo queue-like for Gambit. Again, a lot of just random individual plays, which would then get punished by the other team because they would catch you out and then just kill you. And obviously Gambit would then fall too far behind. But I want to talk about this Morgana a little bit, because typically you want to pick Morgana into the likes of maybe with, with a hyper carry, because your late game damage on a Morgana is somewhat unreliable. It's more about the early to mid game. And you don't really want to pick her into a Kassadin either because of his magic shield. He's actually going to be able to farm fairly easily against Kapushad. And that's also why Gambit right now, he's setting up for potential lane swap. And obviously, you don't want Kalista into a Caitlyn lane, especially not with a Nami. So Gambit has to lane swap in this game with such a strong bottom lane from Giants. Let's see how that lane swap plays out. Just to remind the viewers at home, we are playing on 5.2. Fizz is the only champion that's disabled, and rework Tristana is up and available for later in the day. Not going to be relevant now. Do want to highlight two exhausts on the side of Giants. I think that's very important to note once Nick and Pinoy start to hit those team fights and start to jump in. If Pepinero and Rydal can get them down on the respective opponents, could go a long way to helping Giants win some of those crucial objective battles. And Giants know Gambit is on the top side here with their dual lane, because they saw Eddie, he's moving down towards his blue buff. He's just trying to annoy a little bit, but you do have Smite for Frederick, so it shouldn't be a problem for Giants picking this one up. Yeah, and this is again, Eddie is do has gone for the invade, has gone for the harass every single time. 
that a lane swap has taken place. He did it last week as well. Yep. And it's just something that we see him trying often. Le early level two for Cabochard. So gonna clear out those Krugs up in the top lane. And gonna back, not using his CP yet. And Giants actually failed to get a freeze down in the bottom lane because they were running into the blue buff to see if Gambit was starting there with Diamond, of course, to try and stop him. But he wasn't there. In the end, you didn't get the freeze because you went in the lane at 155. And that means Kabushad now and this Morgana can actually run down to the bottom lane and stand in a 1v2. Just ward up your tribush just behind your tower so you can see if they're moving in to try and dive you with four guys. Otherwise, you just sit there and you farm for yourself. And you actually see him now go in, place the first ward. He's going to spot Frederick and Whirlleap so he knows all four guys from Giants are on this bottom side. All right, let's see how Gambit decides to react. We just caught Nick taking a bit of punishment from Pippa Nero. Early advantage to Giants using the numbers to their favor. Although Diamond may want to contest this one. Smite goes out, ends up being secured by Giants. Diamond wasn't even in range. So early advantage to Giants. Frederick's going to be able to peel back and secure his own red buff. Yeah, and, and Gambit just got three buffed right here with the Giants starting their own blue. And Diamond actually taking a very greedy jungle route, clearing all the camps, the Raptor as well, before he walked over to the blue buff. Meaning for him that he won't be able to get that one. And now three buffs from Giants. This is typically why you see people invade on the enemy buffs in the lane swap. So in this case, it would have been Gambit invading on the blue buff of Giants to secure that one. And then you take your own red buff after. So you don't have this situation where you lose three buffs. It doesn't matter too much on this current patch because their jungle camps give so much XP compared to just the buff itself. But uh, if you uh, let's just go a year back, it would have been devastating for for Gambit. Well, for a team that's one and five, and for Diamond, who's simply not lived up to his pedigree in 2015, let's see how he decides to bounce back. We did just catch that public poll. Some faith in Gambit, 61% to 39, and with the lane swap and the fact that Giants had all of that pressure in the jungle, it's going to allow Pinoy, Edward, and potentially Diamond to get some damage on this top turret. This may also reset the wave, so let's see how they continue to play out this lane swap. Yeah, Giants actually missed time they're back here. Do you want to reach that wave at the tower if you're recalling with two or three guys? In this case, you have the Lee Sin, obviously Naomi and Kassin already at the wave, so they actually lost out on two and a half waves here because they recalled a bit too slow. And again, that's why obviously you send their support with your top end to make sure you just get tower dived. But uh, Gambit can be fairly happy denying them this much farm. And obviously you have the one-on-one -on -one in the bottom lane, but Kapushad is going to do more than fine on this Morgana, just sitting and trying to last it with his pool. Let Audrey be a bit annoying, but get the XP you need. Yeah, we need to keep contrasting Whirlib and Kapushad. How are they farming? What do their levels look like? So far, there's nothing in it in the first five minutes. Pinoy with all of that solo time. Some good damage in Audrey, but being replied back to Kabashad as well. Really using that range of Caitlyn to his advantage. And as we're talking about, 32 CS to the 37 of Pinoy. Pinoy walking towards that first big item spike, most likely going to be a BF sword. However, there's a couple of different build paths you can go with that Callista, as we've seen by a number of different players. Yeah, you really, I mean, if you can go back with 1,550 gold, getting that BF sword is by far the best. It's a big item spike for you. And then you go Hurricane after, because you want to have that one for your mid game. That attack speed is very important. It makes your jump animation a lot smoother once you have 30% attack speed, making it harder for the enemy to predict where you're jumping when you are kiting around. You're going to have to see, I mean, you need 55 CS if you don't miss a single one to have enough for BF Sword. And we can actually see right now there's 1,400 gold for Pinoy, so he should be able to farm it out, get that BF Sword on his first back if he decides to go for that one. Let's see how he decides to itemize. We've also seen Blade of the Rune King built over in North America. Sure. So there's a couple of different routes that he could go for. We have once again caught that middle lane. Pepinero doing a good job of harassing Nick, but it's not costing Nick much CS for the time being. No, and Gambit is keeping this 2v2 lane because they want to try and take down this tower. Knowing that Kabushar can hold his own in the bottom lane, you can take a tower now and then swap Pinoy back down to the bottom lane, and then you actually have a one tower advantage through the lane drop. And oh, a lot of damage on the right. Oh, so much. That's a flash for the auto attack connects. It's not enough. Pinoy with a very aggressive flash. He tweeted earlier that he's expanded his champion pool. And he's playing this Callista very, very aggressive in two Giants. Not going to result in a kill and summon a spell blown. Nice little damage on Whirlyb as well. Remember, he has no jump yet well. on this Cassidy. But to go back to your Blade of the Rune King, I would be very surprised if you build it because you would normally get that if you're going to like one-on-one -on -one a top laner who's fairly immobile. So you have your slow from the Cutlass first, 
then you're slow from the rent. Kassadin will be able to jump away from him, so I'm not expecting Blade to come in from Pinoy. And Pepinero, the standard roam we often see, he's been having a good job, just one-on-one -on -one there against the Zed. I mean, Azir wins nearly every one-on-one -on -one matchup, so a good start for him and a blue buff as well. Yeah, Nick doing okay to stay relevant still. A small amount of CS behind. Slight difference between Cabochon and Whirlip with all of Pinoy the pressure. Going blade. All of the pressure that Pinoy and Edward were putting onto Whirlip in that top lane. You can see that Cassidy slowly trying to claw it back. Early Cutlass, I agree with you, it's a little odd, but yeah. it synergizes really well with the kit. The attack speed, it's a little bit of AD. And of course, that additional kiting power against fairly mobile champions from Giants. Yeah, but that's the problem because if you slow down a Cassidy and he laughs at you and he jumps in your face <laughs> again with his ulti, so he, he won't care about it. And the rest of Giants' composition has a lot of kiting potential, which means it's going to be harder and harder for Pinoy to, to get in range with his blade here, with the active at least, because obviously we have an Azir and a Caitlyn who's just going to stay very, very far back with their damage. I'm a little bit surprised about this one. He is staying in this one-on-one -on -one against Whirly, which is what you do when you get Cutlass as your first item. Oh. And I guess he didn't want to flash. There were so many Ren stacks, and I'm not going to lie, I did not quite expect that pop. That was around 400 odd damage with that last auto attack. Pinoy, easy one-on-one -on -one against Whirlib. You were talking about the kiting power the Cutlass offered you? Yeah. It was demonstrated for sure. Sure. I mean, a pre-level 6, Cassidy. Again, if a Whirlip, he should have been able to predict that damage, or at least close to it, and say, I'm going to play it safely and just flash away. But actually, stayed in, and now first one for Pinoy. Should be a very early blade then for him. Well, we'll see how quickly he can accelerate his item. Again, Pinoy really showing up in this early game. And Whirlip, more questions to be asked. Yeah. He's demonstrated he plays Jax at an LCS winning level, but he's been unable to really impress amongst the rest of the games. And a lot of pressure on him, but let's also be fair, Kassadin is always going to scale and is always going to be relevant the longer this game goes. Gambit, only 200 gold in the lead, but they've got an aggregate CS advantage, I think, if you Still no level 6 of World Leap, and Diamond is here now, forcing him back again. And this basically explains the Cutlass for Gambit or the Blade, because they want to keep Pinoy in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he gets a big XP advantage. Obviously, while Kapusha is just sitting with Eddie in the bottom lane and has no problems farming. So they're simply doing this to shut down the Kassadin. Not putting this Morgana. We talked about how Morgana is a Kassadin. It's very hard to deny Kassadin farm with his magic shield and your lack of overall damage then from the Morgana. So that's why they're doing this Blade of the Ring King first and keeping Pinoy to this one-on-one -on -one world, who is now level 6. So he shouldn't die again. And we might see a bit of a fight here. Frederick and Diamond both towards the top lane. Yeah, the other thing that we didn't take note of is the fact that Pinoy, for the longest time, has not had the support of Edward. So not going to get that bonus damage from Sentinel on the W. Because, of course, Edward has been chilling out and roaming around just a little around the map. Pinoy also maxing the Ren, so trying to get those stacks up as quickly as possible. Let's see if Frederick can make something happen. Riftwalk available for Whirlip. No flash for Pinoy. How patient is Frederick going to be? I have to wait a little bit still before this wave is pushed all the way down. Remember, Pinoy doesn't have any help up in this lane because Diamond already left. And now they're going in. He oh, they're in trouble. Sonic Wave kicks the flash, the hop, the kickback is to safety. And the Frederick's in trouble. There Ren will give him a kill. And the Dark Binding also connects to Whirlib. I don't think it's going to be enough just yet. Flash away. Riftwalk should be up in a moment or two. There is a flash available for Diamond if he wants to go in. There's the flash, the flag, the drag. Whirlib's up. He's going to get taken down. Dark Binding goes wide. Nick gets in range, but not enough for an assist. And Gambit, two more kills on the board. Now Nick with an overextension. He's takes some fine. damage, but he's just fine. Yeah, big, big place in the top lane here. Not sure what happened for Whirly. If he went in, the force pulls went the other way for him. So he didn't actually manage to connect a slow. And then Pinoy managed to jump away. And obviously, he just get kicked back into his own turret. Killing Frederick under this. This is sitting again. So notice how Whirly goes in. Force pulls goes the wrong way. This can happen if you smart cast, actually. And now Pinoy obviously under the turret with Frederick. Going way too aggressive. Wants to slow, actually missed. And obviously Kabusha coming in with the teleport. Gambit turning it around. And we talk about how Giants have to win the early game. It's not looking good right now. No, but they do have some scaling headroom. Let's see what sort of map presence 
Gambit can put down. Red buff picked up for Pinoy. He's behind on CS, but a 12-minute Blade of the Rune King. That's a great pickup. It is for sure, and yeah, as you said here, Giants, they have the scaling comp. Late game, they're going to be great with Azir, with Caitlyn and Cassidy. Had it been on any other team but Giants, because Jack in the late game shot calling we have seen, it's been the biggest problem for them against Rocket. That's why they ended up losing it. And I really want to see if they've improved it now. A week more of practice. I mean, the more you play against these LCS teams when you come from the Challenger Series, the more you learn every single week how you get punished for mistakes and how to adapt to it here. So I really want to see how Giants can play the late game if they get to that point, because they have to come for it. You're talking about adapting. Giants last week against Fnatic were able to predict Rainover's Rengar ganks. The first two or three, and they countered them relatively effectively. But Gambit this week, they've pulled out the top lane Morgana. They've pulled out Kalista for the first time. And they I think they've caught Ga uh, Giants somewhat off guard. So Dragon's going to be started by Gambit. 13 minutes on the clock. Very easily secured. Oh, pull the Edward head in. gets thrown in with Fate's Call. Flash from Audrey. And they're going to burn the cooldown from Pinoy. Just to try set something up. But nothing comes of it. And Gambit still maintain their 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, just a very sing uh, simple dragon call by Gambit here. You saw, obviously, Whirlip sitting and farming at his own turret. And even actually, two other guys from Giant showed themselves, I believe, at the war Gambit had placed here around their blue buffs. So easy call for them, forcing the flash from Audrey and instantly Diamond. Looking towards the bottom lane, they want to dive. Yeah, and take a look at the itemization. This is the first time we're seeing him upgrade to the Stalker's Blade on Jarvan. The split, it's the second game out of seven. Gambit have got the numbers advantage, and here comes Diamond. Cataclysm is available if he wants it, but there is some support on the way from Frederick. And Diamond actually playing somewhat confused. He's running forwards, he's running backwards, deciding against it. A Gambit doesn't have the D boards here to actually go for this dive, knowing there's a high chance of Frederick being nearby. So unless they took the current wards they have just inside the jungle of giants and moved them further in, then they couldn't go for this dive here. So smart enough, they're just waiting around, see if Freddy showed himself anywhere. Let's say he showed him around the mid lane, then they could have gone for it, and that's why he saw the hesitation. So smart enough as well, backing away. We know Pinoy can handle himself with his blade and two kills this early on. Yeah, take a look at the. Items completed for Gambit already. Hourglass for Cabo Shards Morgana. Blade for Pinoy. Getting closer for Nick as well. So there's some very scary items completed already. And yeah, it's a smart little trick by Pinoy here. You saw the rent stacks onto Adri, but he ran out of range. So Pinoy just hit a minion instead next to him, and then he popped the rent. Because it actually has slightly longer range, the damage you take, than the activation range from uh, Pinoy here. So smart enough getting a bit of poke and a tower as well for Gambit. Let's see what Eddie can do. Flash, death sentence, connects, he predicts Audrey's movement. The box goes down and Audrey's caught out of place. A relatively easy kill for Pinoy and Edward. And just to quickly mention, those Caitlyn eyes from the, the trap stuck on Pinoy. It is just an observer-related bug. We will get that resolved in a moment or two. 3,000 gold in favor of Gambit, four kills to zero. This is a very strong early game, and it's been carried by individual performances. Crepo said it on the analyst desk. Pinoy, an AD carry who's mechanically good with potential, he's really showing up in this game. Yeah, especially that gang 2v1 where he managed to get a kill on Frederick was huge for him. And obviously the one-on-one -on -one kill with this Cutlass first item, but now we're going to see a fight here. Face shake from Rydal. No, he actually had a wall place. They're going for it. While the double bubble connects, Pinoy forced to flash away. The wall knocks him back. Edward gets thrown from Fate's Call. Lantern tries to get Pinoy out it's to nice. safety. It's not going to be enough. First kill on the board for Giants as they turn their attention to Edward. And the rift walk from Whirlip. They continue to chase him to down, down to 100 hit points. Death sentence connects. It's not going to be enough. And that's a kill on the board for a Cassidy that was shut down early. Overconfidence from Pinoy and Edward. Yeah, and this really is, again, the Gambit thing. The problem they've had the last few weeks is they do so many things correct and it looks great. And then we have these random things where they just end up dying. Eddie and Pinoy, they walked through the jungle while Diamond was far away. Even Nick was far away. He wasn't even in the mid lane at the time, so there was no backup. And because Giants had already placed a good defensive pink ward, they saw it, Rydal set it up beautifully, and then Giants pick up two kills and suddenly, Getting a kill on you, Azir, will really help him, man. This is all they need. Slowly claw your way back in here. Get to that late game point. We even see Avarice Blade for Atri. So he's trying to rush towards the two item spike on the Caitlyn here, where he can become relevant again. And Giants are not done yet.
Yeah, you've got this really interest, interesting sort of change. CS advantage for Audrey, despite the fact that Pinoy's been under pressure and applying pressure, is falling behind. We'll get to that in a second. Here's the replay. Look at the minimap here. Diamond is at his own red buff, and the rest of Gambit is in their base. And then Pinoy and Eddie walks in by themselves. Nice little deny here from the wall. Paper Nero onto the lantern of Eddie. And then just two kills from Giants. Nice little setup by them, but also just too aggressive by Gambit. Yeah, simply. Not, did not have the vision to make that play, and they get punished for it. Gambit now pushing in the middle wave. Look at Nick. Split pushing the side lane up in the top, and Cabo Shard actually pushing on the bottom. Frederick doesn't connect with the Sonic Wave, so Diamond with an easy escape. And look at the CS differences is what I was touching to just before the replay. Cabo Shard with a strong 40 CS advantage. Audrey, a small lead. But of course, Pinoy with those three kills to his name. He's obviously going to be in a very comfortable position. Second item, Hurricane. So if memory serves, it's the same build that Double Lift had two weeks ago, but I'm not 100% confident on that. Pepe Nero, forced to flash out of the Soul Shackles, going to continue to play aggressive. Frederick. Here comes Frederick. Sonic Wave connects. Hourglass still up for Cabo Shot. Is he going to use it? No. All too easy. And again, overextending. Yeah, one ward placed in the jungle, not even very far in, so he has no chance of actually seeing who's coming down to the bottom lane. Another kill now for Giants, but Tower did go down because Pinoy is so strong in this Callista. He can just move to whatever lane he wishes and take down whatever he wants. And also with the Hurricane being completed very soon, it's going to give him a lot of wave clear to just keep pushing down these waves. Obviously, Whirly is not really able to do too much in terms of defending other than just lasting under the turret. Pipanero and Audrey has to be there together to provide some instant wave clear if they want to stop Gambit from taking turrets. Or they can, of course, just keep walking around and killing them. Well, let's see what Gambit does from here on out. This is the point where I get worried for the team. They've got a, a lead. It's not massive. They're giving up a few kills here and there, but most importantly, with three towers down, how do Gambit play the vision in Giant's uh, jungle? And how are they going to decide to push this, this map? They've been trying the 1-3-1 or, you know, 1-2-1 as it were recently. And we need to see what Gamba decides to do. For the moment, Dragon's up, so that seems to be the focus. Yeah, and Giants not in a position to fight for this one. Gamba does have two pink wards already being placed there. Giants right now should just try and take this mid turret and trade it for the Dragon, because you don't want to go in a straight team fight. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Four guys sitting in the mid lane. No teleport by Whirly. If Gamba looks for a fight here, it's going to be five versus four. So a lot of damage onto the tower, but not even taken down. Gamba were able to two-man the Dragon and still defend their mid turret. That's a very strong play. Yeah, but still, Giants knowing they couldn't fight. And that's a thing they've learned now, because we saw in uh, some of the other games they've played where they would still run into a lost dragon fight, basically try and take it, end up falling even further behind, and then the game would just be over. Here, they tried to take the mid turret, and now they go straight to top lane. What they could have done instead was send just one guy mid lane, let's say to Caitlyn, and put the rest of the guys to the top lane, fast push it in, and try and get this tower down. They're still going for it now, but now Gambit has the time to actually regroup and come up and defend it. Well, let's see what happens. We did see Ace in the hole catching onto Pinoy. He's decided to go aggressive. Pepe Nero, as well as Audrey, able to pick up the kill. Top lane is defended. Bubble does not connect. Now let's see what Gambit can do. They've got a numbers advantage top. They've caught the dark binding. Whirlib just gets melted. Gambit reply. That's one for one. And they defend the top turret, while Pinoy got a lot of damage on that inner turret on the bottom. That's down to below half. Yeah, again, Giants here, first trying to push the mid lane, then going for the top lane, just a little bit too slow for them, allowing Gambit to take Dragon and go back and actually defend their lanes here. And then trading one for one, Pinoy. Second time we see someone from Gambit die in the bottom lane, where they have zero wards in the enemy jungle. And that's again why Pepe Nero now can actually push in, take a tower for himself. He's getting very fit on this Azir, and that's going to be scary the longer we get into the game. There's really been no pressure on Pepe Nero, and you know, we were actually touching in the pregame. Um, tower security here yeah, for Gambit. They're, they're uh, way out of position. Look for the Dark Bunny. It's predicted! Cabochard connects with Audrey. Killing Tick goes to Cabochard. That was a good shot. And at least Giants, you know, they're keeping the gold relevant. They've closed the lead. And we talked in pregame how important Pepe Nero was going to be for Giants. 301, 220 CS. And he has the potential to swing team fights. Strong words of the potential here for Pepe Nero. And Giants actually managed to defend their mid lane again. It's a bit of a weird game. It's really of, awkward. Like, the mid tower going down with Adri and Teleport obviously coming in from Whirly, sacrificing Adri for the tower. 
if you know you can then defend, it's okay, because it's better obviously to get a tower than one kill. But Gambit, after that kill, two of the guys went back into the jungle. Nick went down to the bottom lane to start pushing it. Instead of just going five mid, with Atri being dead, that's most of the wave clear from Giants, at least the instant one. Try and force down that tower here, push your lead. You had no reason to not punish Giants for making a very greedy play in the mid lane. Well, unfortunately, Gambit may not always be aware of when they can push their lead. This is a primary example of one of those scenarios. They do regain that small gold buff that they have. We haven't touched on the items in just uh, in a little while. Diamond working towards that Aegis as his second item against all of the AP from Cassidy and Azir. I think that's particularly smart. Hurricane was completed by Pinoy. Adri's hit his two item spike as well with Shiv plus Aegis. Still no Greaves, so we most likely are not going to be seeing Giants pushing too far. Except Whirlip, he's been caught out of position. He goes straight into everybody from Gambit. He hops over the wall twice and gets dropped by Pinoy once more. Yeah, and Pepe Nero is forced to sit in this bottom lane defending against Nick. He's the only guy who can really hold him off here with the already outlast, or with the outlast already completed, sorry. So Gambit can actually put some pressure on this Baron, force Giants to come in and check them, like to do right here, and get another kill. Death sentence oh, no. connect. Now it's Frederick's turn to hop over the wall. He seems to be able to get away. We do see Nick split pushing in the bottom lane. Frederick thinking about a steal, but Pinoy. With all of that rain damage, will easily be able to secure it. Exactly. That's why Gamma can actually go for this Baron and just have Pinoy stack it up and destroy it again. It's like 1,000, one, even maybe 2,000. Oh, not again. Is, is this really number three? It's, it's going to be the third this one. This time Sonic Wave came in. Gamma's still staying around. Frederick. Oh, Frederick. He dodges one bullet only to say, yes, yeah, sorry, Straight guys. Now. I'll give you another one. Giants there give up another kill in the pit. Gambit are going to be able to secure this Baron. Unless a godlike defense from Whirlip comes into play. Let's see if they peel. Yeah, keep in mind, there's not too much armor on Gambit, so they're taking a lot of damage here from this Baron. And that's why they're now forced to back away as soon as Giants made a move. But there was a quite a lot of kills being picked up. And Nick got a lot of damage on the bottom lane turret as well. So Gambit for now, finally actually staying together, not being caught out by Giants, and randomly give up some kills. Ironically, it's Giants that's doing that. Frederick manages to sidestep the death sentence only to walk into a Javan flag and drag. Yeah. Yes, it didn't result in anything further. Gambit did not manage to secure the Baron, but they're giving more gold, they're giving more kills over to Gambit. It was a bit of a tough situation. He almost had to do it. I mean, you need to go and see if they're starting it, because again, you know the Callista can use her rend on it and just destroy it in the very end if she's just left to hit it here. So he actually made the right call. It was just, yeah, you know, you have to die for it because, again, you've fallen behind already. And actually, look at the side of Giants. No boots, as you mentioned earlier, for the Caitlyn. No boots on Azir either. So not looking towards any mobility. Just want to rush straight for their items, their core items. Want to try and, like, get to this three-item spike on both the carries before they put any focus on mobility. So it means... In a potential team fight, Kabushad, if he flashes onto them, he'll be able to follow them with his ulti very, very easily and just stun them, win the fight for Gambit. Yeah, and Gambit are one dragon buff away from their mobility. It's also going to give them more tools, but we knew Giants were looking to late game. We knew Giants were looking to scale. Their composition signaled that. Kiss, uh, Cassidy, Azir, and Caitlyn. But the scary thing is, they're now giving up three dragon buffs, 2,000 gold down. They're, they're not as far behind as you might think for this stage in the game. Yeah, but again, that's still what we see on this new map, we keep talking about how Dragon doesn't give the global gold any longer. So we don't see the same kind of gold leads we used to see if we look back just at Worlds, where you could be like 10, 15k ahead by 30 minutes if you were really destroying the enemy team. But the problem for Giants in this game was really the lane swap itself, where they failed to get a freeze in the bottom lane and then didn't even go and try and dive onto Kapu Shot and like deny him some farm. So he was actually left farming on his own while Whirlip had a lot harder time getting a bit late to the top lane. He was denied a lot of farm from Pinot. He even died to him. So he fell very far behind. And you kind of lost the whole Caitlyn advantage because when you play Caitlyn, you have to win the laning phase. That's why she's so strong. And then obviously the late game points. So because the lane swap was swapped around and Gambit actually won it, it really meant that Caitlyn pick didn't pay off, at least not for now. And obviously the Cassidy got set further behind than he should have. So we need to see how Giants play this late game. You've touched on the early game, the laning phase, and we've touched on the fact that Gambit maintain a lead. But Gambit 
gave up their lead last week when they were playing against H2K. They also earned up a lead and really Gamble were only able to win team fights that H2K made mistakes in. Giants, in a similar vein, were even with Rocket at around the 25 minute mark, about a thousand golds separated the teams and it was Dragon fights that lost the game for Giants. We've hit this point where one cataclysmic battle will determine a Baron, will determine inner turrets, and all of that map pressure. So no room for error for either of these teams. No rooms at all, especially again, because you're playing to avoid the last place in the LCS. Giants obviously been losing four games in a row now. Slowly, MYM and Giants, oh sorry, Gambit, getting closer and closer, one on five, both teams. So it's gonna be huge for Gambit to take this win here, and again, Still no boots, but he's going for another beef source again. He wants that three item spike before he goes into any mobility because that's where he can start, become strong and actually useful in team fights. Yeah, and interesting to see that it's a BF sword instead of the likes of a Last Whisper. Albeit there's not a massive amount of armor along yeah. the Gambit side. This so is fine, yeah. Fairly smart itemization. Going BT and that's good. Giant's still happy to farm, still happy to play slow. I do want to echo the sentiment you just mentioned, Officio. If Giants lose this game, they will be tied with Gambit at two wins and five losses down at the bottom of the table. But we're a long way away from that. Both teams playing very passive, playing very safe. Nick toying with the idea of a rush. Keep in mind, Hourglass and a fully stack rod for Whirlib. Tools are there for Whirlib to survive. And he's got Flash. Let's see what Nick can do. I think he's three levels above him, so he's just going to go in first. Notice what Nick did here. He didn't pop his ulti instantly. He went in with a few auto attacks. You can even use your blade active, and then you can force Whirlip to either use his outlast too early and then ult him after, or just force him to flash away like Nick did here for himself. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the build here from Kappa Shard, and he's going like full AP, so full mid-game snowball. I want as much damage as possible. So he's actually sacrificing cooldown reduction, which you normally see as a very, very strong stat on Morgana, because the more bindings you can land in a fight here, obviously the Black Shield coming in as well, going to be huge on Pinoy to just make him unkillable for Giants. So sacrificing the cooldown reduction to go for as much AP as possible on the Morgana here. Wouldn't be surprised to see some cooldown reduction coming in later, though, from Copper Shot. So the option is available. You see, as we've mentioned, still no boots. For Audrey, no upgrade for Pepe Nero. Playing the farm game, they're falling slightly further behind, 3,000 gold. Dragon's gonna be up in two minutes. Vision, sorely lacking actually for Gambit. They don't really have deep wards in Giant's jungle to play aggressively. And it just feels like Gambit are happy to keep uh, yeah. fighting their time until the next objective. I think Gambit realized they were being caught out a bit too much and said, we already have all the dragons. We have the goal lead. We can just wait for this fifth dragon. It's not going to be too much time for Giants to scale up. And that's why they're just staying back and playing it extremely safe. But they got to secure that fifth dragon then when it spawns and then start closing out the game. Otherwise, we're getting very, very close to this late game point of so. Giants. And honestly, that might end up biting Gambit in the butt. So teleport is available for Whirlip. He's in the bottom lane. Gambit have got positioning to get some damage on this inner tower, but Giants have actually managed to make it back in time. You see the locket thrown down there from Diamond, and Nick, he's backed away. So a few auto attacks from Gambit. Nothing further secured. And just this stalemate continues to grow. One minute before Dragon, look at the vision. Neither team has got real control of the pit, and it feels like Giants are more invested in this next engage. Yeah, definitely looking a lot stronger. No BT yet, though, completed for Audrey on his side. And no wards being placed by Giants yet, so they might end up actually face-checking onto Gambit. What we can do, if you are this far behind and you don't feel like you have to fight yet, because again, the fourth dragon, yes, okay, you have the ticking time bone thing, but you can still wait for next one. Instead, look at the wave top lane here. Go up with your Caitlyn, take that wave in, get a tower for yourself, clear the pink wards Gambit has around the Baron, set up your own wards here, buy a bit more time, and try and trade this dragon, if you don't want to fight for it, that is, for at least something to your team. But it looks like Giants are actually staying around it here, looking for the first team fight of the game. But Gambit is in a good position to start it. Deficio, Giants don't want a whole lot of anything at the moment. They have been playing so reactive and so defensive over the last few minutes. Still no boots, 2,000 gold unspent for Audrey. I don't know about this fight, it's against a smite and a rend. Pinoy keeps stacking up those arrows. 
is going to be available. Oh, Idol caught up by the Dark Binding. Tidal Wave thrown down. It's just going to be sidestepped by Gambit. I don't know why you tried to steal that, Frederick. He's looking to escape. Flashes over the wall. He's going to safeguard away. They've traded the Dragon for minions, most likely taking that tower down. There's another wave will peel on, but Nick looking to respond. Gambit get the fourth Dragon of the game. Should be able to trade one tower for one in this yeah. scenario. So we'll get one tower at least for Giants here. Didn't want to try and go for the aggressive play. Actually, the tower won't even go down. Not they, even. Yeah. They don't gain anything for this at all. They try to steal it against a Callista with Rend and obviously the Smite, which could come in from Diamond. Now Baron started by Gambit here. Giants is nearby. They're going to try and stop them. They should get a kill on Eddie. Edward is low. Whirlip's going to jump in. That's the first kill of the fight, but Whirlip forced away. It's in reply for Frederick. Now Cabashot is in trouble. He flashes over to the blue buff area of Giants behind enemy territory. Soul Shackles has been burned. They've traded one kill for one and teleport away from Cabo Shard. Pippinero predicted the wrong direction. No <laughs> knockup, but no Baron secured for either team. And Nick with some damage on the inhibitor turret. This is a very strange set of exchanges. Yeah, and now we have Gambit on four dragons. So they can again just wait for the next one. They don't have to make any aggressive plays until that dragon arrives. And Giants will actually be able to... You see the Baron being started here. Meanwhile, you can see Nick in the bottom lane. He's pushing it in. And Gambit is now trying to force Giants to come teleport. Whirlip comes up here so Nick can take a tower. But they're lucky trading one for one because Giants is here with all five. Diamond is in the mid lane. So again, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's very split up. It seems to be more like indi individual plays and saying, let's go Baron now. And then the rest of the team is like, ah, I'm not too sure about it. They don't really want to follow. And then we get this kind of messy game. We have going on between Giants and Gambit. So Giants playing defensive, playing passive. Finally, we see that Bloodthirster completed for Adri and Tier 1 boots. Pepinero's got Void Staff, also Tier 1 boots. But Giants, they've made no indication they want to challenge for a win. A 4,000 gold down. Gambit, on the other hand, feels like they're using the solo queue playbook to play this game out. Pinoy sort of solo carrying. Kabashad getting some great solo plays. But as a unit, they've not particularly been on the same page. <laughs> all that often. So a few minutes to go until this next dragon respawns. Nick, two level advantage over Whirlip. Should be able to interrupt the recall if he wants to, decides against it. No vision, so wouldn't have had the tools available. Okay, let's see Deficio, Jewel. Recall. Why does he not want to fight? Tell me, tell me. Because Why do they not want to do anything? So his team is basically pinging the rest of Giants coming through the river here. So Nick didn't really want to go 1v5. He is a strong Zed, but he hasn't really been able to do anything the entire game long, other than actually just push and take a few towers. Pinoyo's down in the bottom lane, so Giants now should finally be able to get a tower in this top lane. At least get some global goal for themselves, but it's going to be, again, all about their next dragon. I'm at a loss for words, Deficio. Giants finally making a push up onto the map with some shoes on their feet. They might want to make some aggressive plays. Gambit pushing in the mid lane. Giants pushing in the top lane. We have the makings of a base race. If you don't know how to outplay your opponents, just try out-rotate them. As yet turret thrown down very early from Pepe Nero. And we do see it's actually Gambit with the advantage. They've taken the inhibitor turret in the bottom lane, forced back. Whirlip's been able to defend the inhibitor, and now we do have a very brief pause. <laughs> like uh, Pinoy <laughs> here. Small problem for himself. Deficio, I, I, I think you're very silent because I think you have to be as confused as I am. Just a little bit. 35 minutes into the game, yeah. Giants finally have some ability, finally have some boots, finally feel strong enough to fight, and they manage to catch Gambit because Gambit are not grouped either. But it's Giants that come away worse for wear. They lose an inhibitor turret in that trade. Yeah, and I mean, again... <laughs> For Giants in this game, it's just been falling behind in the lane swap and then basically just waiting to lose in some way. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a bit harsh to say, but they haven't tried to make any plays around the map other than picking off Gambit a few times in the early game to kind of come back in this game here. And instead of just being happy sitting and sitting and farming and let, let Gambit pick up the dragons, that might become the big problem now when the next one spawns. Yep. If Giants isn't there in time, to ward that one up correctly so you can set up this Azir and Caitlyn to stand back, 
kite a little bit, use the long range you have to win that fight, then Gambit will pick up that dragon and should be able to close out the game with the buff because Baron is going to go down right after, and then suddenly you have this Gambit team on steroids who's just going to roll over you. Yeah, this is something that, you know, we haven't seen too... Well, actually, this is what we were expecting, really, from the game. You know, Gambit have the ability to get a lead early, but not particularly strong at pushing their advantage, not particularly strong at, at using it to their lead. The last 15, 20 minutes, they've been caught out, they've been <laughs> solo. Giants, on the other hand, as you mentioned, maybe not waiting to lose, just maybe not playing to win. It's not been a proactive play style. It has been reactive. It's been defensive. Um, I think they're so invested in late game, they just forgot everything else. They just, Completely. <laughs> screw the first 30 minutes. We'll just chill, take our time, you know, stay on our side of the jungle. I don't like water, don't like the river, so just don't go there. <laughs> That's how we find ourselves. The worst thing is, it might actually end up working for them. <laughs> because now we are the late game. Yep. As long as they can win that next dragon fight, it's might actually end up being okay for Giants. I and mean, we're going to have this situation where a team should have been able to close out five, ten minutes ago maybe, at least so push it even harder. And they haven't. They're just the dragon fight caught out. The dragon fight that cost Giants last week against Rocket was around 25, 26 minutes. Yeah. This time it might be 37, 38 minutes, but it's going to be a similar scenario. One big team fight, and with exposed bases now, you know, one down to inhibitor turret, one exposed inhibitor, it's scary. You can see on the uh, scoreboard just below you, two... Upgraded greater stealth totems. We've not seen too many of them, despite the fact that I think we were maybe, uh, you know, we thought we might see more of them once yeah. they were patched in in 5.2. Uh, wards available for Gambit, but they're not using it effectively. I mean, all they've been doing for the last, I mean, what they've been doing for the last five minutes around Baron has been okay, because they've been like baiting out the Baron, got a few kills from it. The problem is, as soon as as soon as uh, Giants were like, okay, we're just not going to care. We're just going to go in and like, just slowly push you away. Gambit just completely gave it up, went back to their own base. So yeah, they haven't been using their wards correctly. We've seen many, many times where Gambit were pushing a side lane. Didn't have a single ward in the enemy jungle. Again, got caught out and died. Delayed everything. It's the exact same thing we saw last week from them. I'm surprised because it should be easy enough as a team just to yeah. have your mindset saying, okay, buy more wards. We have to play more, more careful. We have to, again get on these deep boards when we have the lead so we don't end up falling behind or at least delaying the game for such a long time. All right, so guys, the uh, refs are on stage. are busy investigating a problem with Pinoy regarding some damage dealt in game. Uh, his client is busy being restarted. So while they're investigating that, we'll keep chatting about the game just a little bit. I think, I think everybody's feeling the awkwardness a little bit, uh, the patient, the passive play. And I think it is also a testament of where these teams find themselves in the table. They're both down, you know, potentially being in that position where they are number 10. You know, number 10th team, number 10th team auto-relegated at the end of the split. Yeah. And next week is the halfway point. Next week, at the end of Thursday, 50% of the games have been played. And it is so, so difficult to start clawing those wins up. We heard, uh, I think it was Nick or Pinoy saying earlier that if the, the first win last week could start the snowball for them to pick up more wins. They've started well in this game, but they're not ending particularly convincingly. No, exactly. Same problems. Still slight improvement from Gambit compared to week one, week two. So we have seen their success from Leviathan. The coach coming in obviously used to be the Alliance coach last year. Um, so slowly, but it's not there yet. I mean, yeah. it's far from good enough from what we expect from a team like Gambit. And it's fun because this is actually the way they won I Am Cologne. Yeah. Same kind of style, just random team fights everywhere, no wards. We even had two games against CLG where they got to like 55 minutes. They won one of them through a base race with a Jax, and the other one they lost because WF was just unkillable. So they've been here before, going full late game and be weaker and still try and pull it out. And that's again why I'm surprised as a team, you don't go back and say, what are we doing wrong? Why can't we close the game here? Yes, okay, they have the dragons. And we might end up sitting here saying, well, Gambit won, they got five dragons, that was great. Yeah, but Gambit lost to Copenhagen Wolves because of bad late game calls. Very true. So there needs to be some learning. There needs to be a point where, you know, last week they were in the base of the Copenhagen Wolves and said, we'll stick around, we'll stick around, we'll keep pushing. Wolves respawned, killed them, and then the Wolves went on to win the game. You know, there was a 59 minute match. We're at 35 minutes in this one. So the potential for Epic is, is, is in there. I, I do think Pinoy has to be called out. His, his Callista's been phenomenal. He's got a bunch of solo yeah. kills. Mechanically, He's doing the right things. And it does look like we're back in game. So with some luck, everything's been resolved. And we do find ourselves with that in exposed inhibitor. Hey, what's up, guys? Just need to see us one moment left. All right, so this one again, you mentioned the greatest stealth totems coming in. And that's again, so 
Diamond actually didn't go for Sidestorm because he was going to go for that Stealth Totem. But we're just going to see Giants now start the Baron. Pinoy and Diamond are very far away. Giants just got a free Baron. So Giants, after losing an inhibitor turret, and securing a top in a turret, now have the tools they need to push the map. They have not done it Dragon at all. Dragon in 130 as well. Baron buff Giants. Death Cap should be completed for the Kassadin as well before this fight. QSS coming in for Atri, so Nick can't go for him any longer. He can't go for Kassadin, he cannot go for the Azir either with the Hourglasses, meaning there's very few targets now for Nick in this late game team fight. So Giants should go push up these waves here and be ready for this Dragon. Get a few pink wards, sell that Dorn's Blade as well on your AD carry. You're gonna need that pink ward now for this next dragon team fight. Get the vision around it and take that dragon away from Gambit and suddenly you are actually looking like you're gonna win this game. So Deficio with Baron buff and you said that very passive, not playing to win but playing to not lose. Let's see if it's going to be enough for Giants to take on Gambit. One minute, less than a minute before that dragon spawns. Not a lot of vision being placed down here from the side of Giants, but they've managed to push the wave up middle, which should allow them to close onto that dragon when it spawns up. And we'll see if they've got the timing. Look at their damage already now. Already, <laughs> maybe 40 minutes in, but look at the damage <laughs> from a late game Azir. Onto Eddie here. Two hits from the soldier. Oh, Whoa, Pinoy as so well much. dropping down. Pinoy zoned away. He does have Bloodthirster, but not a lot of minions to heal off. And with that Baron buffed Siege minion, Giants are going to take another turret. This is and the second dragon. inner turret in a few minutes. And they're going to get their first touch of the Look dragon. At here. He's going to try and steal it. There's one pink wall for Rydal to try and deny vision in the dragon pit itself from Diamond here. But he can obviously put down the flag and then try and jump in to take it. He's going in. Oh, he didn't get it. Does not manage Woo. to pick it up. Flashes out of the pit. Now we see Diamond is out of position if Gambit, if Giants were to push down a turret. Frederick chasing onto Diamond. He follows after the flag and drag. Manages to get the slow out from the Tempest and the Cripple. But now it's Giants that are split up. They're pushing the bottom wave. Massive amount of Gambit minions, both top and bottom lane, pushing towards Giants. And Giants using the last minutes of their Baron buff to make a play. Willip was thinking about the recall, decides against it. There's those Gambit yeah. minions we were Willip talking about. Willip has to go back here because Nick is pushing down on Zed, but Willip does have teleport, so they can push into this bottom lane here with the four guys, and knowing that he can join in as well, he's back in the base now, defending it, but Nick will be able to get a, a tower to go with the minions. And now, Giants pushing up. You got the 6% AP and AD, and you denied the fifth dragon from Gambit, the one they've been waiting for all game long. Baron buff is about to time out. But the value of that dragon at 40 minutes, the first Insane. dragon, is so much greater. 6% of what you've accrued over the entirety of the, of the match. Giants up with a chance. Pepe Nero did throw down that Sun Disk Tower. He's done it actually very early, both times he's casted on those inner turrets. Giants still a small amount of gold down, but unable to crack the inhibitor turrets of Gambit. Yeah, and really one of the big problems for Gambit in this game here is also again, you mentioned how they had the greater stealth totems, didn't have the greater vision totem, there was not enough focus on the pink wards. Eddie doesn't even have Oracle Lens yet, despite Gambit staying around that Baron for such a long time, time tr tr trying to bait it simply. Didn't have enough tools to deny vision from Giants, and therefore they could never actually pick it up for free or get a big team fight going on. And that's again, bought time for Giants. We are at the late game stage now. The Caitlyn suddenly is useful after her failed laning phase due to the lane swap. And obviously the Azir has been a big deal. Entire game long from Pepe Nero, And he's looking great now. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you have something useful if you don't use it. You know, Giants, they now have all of the tools. They had the Baron buff. They took turrets. They took a dragon. Giants have the good vision in the defensive side of Gambit. But how do they start a fight? Gambit is trying to set up a small trap here. If Giants went for the bottom lane wave, Gambit would just run straight down to the base, take Inhibitor, and obviously try and push up the top wave as well. Decide now to go back because Giants didn't bite and run straight to this bottom lane. And that's going to be so much about these late game wards coming in because people start maximizing max out their items, so they can't buy as many wards as you can in the early game. And obviously there's only a sidestorm for Frederick, none for, for Diamond here, so he's completely relying on that stealth totem for his wards. We need to see how Diamond uses it. I don't think they've done a whole lot. Still sitting 
on a health potion for Diamond. He just bought two health potions. Deficio, I know you love the 40-minute health pots instead of wards. It is uh, one of your favorite strategies all the time. That's sustained, man. It's I know Kremble lost his two on that. <laughs> <one. They understand. laughs> so, unable to push further. Giants, Rylai's Crystal Scepter now picked up for Pepe Nero. No additional attack speed in his Azir build, which is what we've seen from many other regions. Going to be looking straight for that AP damage. For some burst up front as opposed to multiple auto attacks. And Giants, they need to make a play. Giants need to push their advantage. Use the scaling to their favor. They've hit massive, massive item, you know, spikes and, and build uh, uh, plateaus. But they haven't made a play as a unit. Gambit have been scattered, but proactive and Giants still. Super defensive. Maybe it's going to need uh, five dragons for Giants. Yeah, well, the last five minutes at least for Giants have actually been pretty good. Getting their first dragon, getting the Baron, obviously, and then cleared out all the outer turrets from Gambit as well. Still risky because you have the four dragons on Gambit, so you can never afford giving up a dragon. You can't trade it for the Baron, etc. But I like what Giants is doing now. Set up around it here. You have a lot of pink wards placed already. Oracle Lens already completed for Rydal as well. Force Gambit into a 5 versus 5 team fight where you control the area, you control the ground. And then just see how Nick tries to go for a target and laugh at him when you QSS or Hourglass it and he won't be able to pick up a kill. But we're going to have to see the, how Giants actually want to lock down Pinoy. Because there's no real hard CC straight onto him. You could, you should never be able to land a bubble onto a Callista. So at that's also point. why the Rylai is coming in, obviously, from Paper Nero, trying to get some slows on him with the castle and see if you can kill him. I really want to see how Giants handle Vision and Baron and Dragon buff. With the fact that Gambit, five, you know, five dragons, and that's nearly a game-ending buff. Or if Giants get their second dragon, but Gambit get a Baron, that could also be the tools that they need. Giants may have the opportunity to flank Gambit. Gambit are committing to this one. They're pushing down the lane. Ace in the hole is going to shred Edward's HP. Gambit a little split. Diamond not with his team. He's on the sidelines looking to get a good Cataclysm. The inhibitor is secured from Gambit. This is going to allow them some pressure on the map and still unable to find a fight. Whirlip gets the, the force pass down. Gambit on the retreat. Damage put down. Giants still looking to find a way to engage and it simply does not happen. Oh. Gambit take them on a tour of their own base and knock down the inhibitor while en route. Yeah, smart move here. They're in mobile comp from Gambit and no hard engage obviously from Giants here. So they couldn't actually start the fight. They tried to, but instead Gambit with the inhibitor and staying around his bottom lane, trying to remove all the focus from Baron and Dragon and try and get these inhibitors put down. And look how effective Gambit are when they group up as five and actually try to make a team decision. Frederick caught by a death sentence. Edward decides against following in. 10 seconds before Dragon. Baron is up and there are super minions in the middle lane. Gambit have arrested control of the map and of the game and Giants need to find a window of opportunity. Yeah, they know they have to fight for this one here. Oh, and they got to pay with arrow. Let's see what he can do. A lot of damage down. Ignite burns out. Death Sentence was held onto by Nick. Dragon being secured here from Gambit That's with Ren Gambit and now. Smite. Dragon number five secured, and it was Nick from the side that allowed that to happen. Yeah, got a good flank onto Pepinero. Didn't use his ult, he just poked him down a little bit, forced him then to back away. Baron as well now, about to be started by Gambit. Only a few pink wards around it they can clear. And Giants once again forced into a very, very bad situation where they have to try and fight. Azir is simply not there. Four members of Giants trying to come in. Frederick's been caught. Whirlip decides to engage on the sideline. Soul Shackles already burned. His cabbage shot flashes forward. Baron secured by Gambit as they take down Frederick. Now Pepe Nero hooked by the death sentence. Hourglass is available for Pepe, but he's holding on to it. Audrey doing the best he can to put damage down, but it's a two for one trade. Not over yet as Diamond continues to look for targets. Teleport comes up from Cabochard, and he throws the Dark Binding way wide. Gambit get fifth Dragon, Baron, a few kills, and looking to push the base. Yeah, Baron buff, you have the fifth Dragon wave pushing in as well for them. They're gonna go straight for this tower. All the carries, though, are still alive from Giants. Trying to do the best to defend against Gambit here. Oh, this is gonna be really difficult, Diamond. As the team man, team player, Blocks that ace in the hole. This is going to be a 4v3 at best, but look at the damage onto Whirlip. Pinoy is destroying him. Minions in the top lane pushing against Gambit, and Pepe Nero is the safe wave clear with those soldiers. They defend the Baron buff minions from Gambit, 
but Nick is going to empower them in the mid lane, and look at the damage top. Losing some HP on that tower. They're going back now. Knowing that the minions wouldn't really be able to take it down in time, and you have to power up Recall as well from the Baron here. So suddenly Gambit. So we mentioned how even though Giants would be stronger in a straight up fight, you've fallen so far behind, there's always the risk of the fifth dragon, open, open inhibitor as well. And Gambit actually made a very good late game call here, rushing straight down for that one. Take Dragon, take Baron, managed to clear everything on the map. So well played by Gambit. Now they're showing some coordination. And once again, they're staying grouped up. Kabasha does not have teleports. He's a little far away from his team, so Gambit wisely back away from that last push. I think for Gambit, they need to find a way to get rid of Pippa Nero in these base defense situations at this stage and with all of the AP that pepe has got built up. Even Baron-empowered minions are simply not enough. Baron is slowly wearing off for Gambit. Taking a look at the time really quickly. Um, yeah, Baron about a minute left. Dragon's going to time out in the next 30-odd seconds. Wurlip does get caught out. He's been chilling, smited. Hourglass is out. Eddie, he winds up. He connects. Death sentence holds Wurlib in place. One of the carries is down. Remember, Kabashad and Pinoy are not there. What can Giants do in reply? Frederick gets flayed backwards. Ace in the hole's not enough to kill him, but there's the soldiers. Emperor's Divide was not used from Giants, and Gambit managed to bet get out after securing a kill. Pinoy has also joined the fight. Baron still ticking for a few seconds longer. Gambit, five on four, a minute before Wurlib's back up. Yeah, Diamond had to go back to base. However, he was fairly low from that last little fight and now Kemba want to play very safe and have all five guys there before they really go for anything too aggressive just get a few hits on the turret you have to beat the shield and frederick dropping oh, low so much damage soul shackles was blown for that one fate's call still available if Pinoy wants to lob his buddies into the giants tower has been defended for the time being dark finding not far enough. Edward doesn't connect either, but Gambit secured the inhibitor turret. Pepe Nero stepped away for a second, and that means the objective is secured. The super minions almost on the nexus now. Four giants as that inhibitor has just respawned. Gambit, two open objectives to push down. All five members available. Tidal Wave is up for idle if they want to throw it out. Gambit, however, going to secure the middle inhibitor. Most likely back away. Again. Can we make some better calls here in the late game? Can also go for the next dragon once it actually spawns. That's the side waves pushing. And suddenly, Giants getting denied that potential team fight they really wanted here in the late game. But remember, they don't have any real engage on their side. I mean, it's going to be about Whirly jumping in, landing a slow, and that's how you're looking to start a fight. And that's again why Giants, or oh sorry, Gambit actually can avoid them now and just dance around giants on the map get all these objectives down and suddenly back in the driving seat yeah and that's definitely something i think we didn't actually hit on in picks and bands is the fact that giants team combat had this scaling it you know had these weak lanes but they've got no tools outside of a bubble or a tidal wave to really lock down gambit and with the you know the black shield the shadows the hop skips and jumps from pinoy and you know even Jarvan being so mobile it is quite difficult for that to happen. You look down the CS, 320, 350, 480, 430. Everybody's hit their mega late game states. And Gambit, I think wisely, are playing defensive in the base. You know, we keep saying this, at least I am. Last week, Gambit lost a game when they were inside the base of their opponents. They definitely do not want to repeat that again. Nick split pushing top, Gambit setting up for their dragon number six. Yeah, again, Gambit is playing it really smart in this late game. For all the mistakes they've made earlier, we've got to give them full credit now for the way they're securing all objectives. Oh, the on to they caught well. Audrey. Diamond was trying to zone him away. No other support. Now it's Diamond the one that's in trouble. Rend goes out and Dark Binding. Flash forward. Soul Shackles picks up one. Now Nick looking to jump in. He's got some AoE on three. Empress Divide's going to split Gambit away as Nick gets popped from GA, but he's taken down Rydal in the process. Edward, where is the death sentence? Is it ready? No, it is not. Lantern pulls him backwards. A three for GA. And Gambit have got the numbers to finish this game. Yeah, pushing straight in. You have Super Minion coming as well here. This should be the win for Gambit. Gonna be able to oh, connect. Get Audrey gets too. caught out. Edward in the house. Audrey forced away. Gambit are sticking onto the Nexus turrets. Whirlip's doing the best he can to put damage out, but look at the burst from Pinoy. He's gonna get some healing up and down. Audrey's gonna get taken out. Gambit secure the win after 50 minutes.
taking down Giants. Gambit Gaming destroy Giants Gaming's Nexus. GG, GG. Yeah, good win for Gambit here. Very important for them as a team. They're now tied with Giants in the standings. Two and four, two wins, four losses. Actually, two wins and five losses, we should probably say instead, as we are now on to week four of the LCS. Yeah, I want to also just touch on the standings. That's a five-game losing streak that Giants have now suffered. Smiles all around, actually, from the players. The Giants have now mirrored Gambit's losing streak at the beginning of the split. They're both down at the bottom of the table. The intro to the show was talking about streaks, winning streaks, losing streaks. Gambit now have two games on their streak, but the big pressure's on Giants. They weren't playing bad, but they weren't playing proactive. You know, there's very little you can point to other than that barren play that you can say Giants were really going into Gambit, was really pushing Gambit and, and pushing Giants' limits. That's true. Again, they fell very far behind from lens of the early game. And then despite them actually getting to a late game and getting a lot of picks onto Gambit, because they had an open inhibitor, because there was four dragons for Gambit, there are so many ways for them to still lose the game, despite yeah. them actually looking very, very good suddenly after picking up their Baron. And that's what Gambit played around, and that's why we have to give them credit for the late game decisions, how they actually avoided the team fights, got the right objectives, and ended up winning the game. But you have to, I mean, we have to again to look at the early to mid game where there were too many mistakes for both the teams. Yeah. And that's just how it is. But uh, for now, Gambit can look at it and say, we secured a win, it wasn't pretty, but we have a win, and that's the important part. We can then.